Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to episode 6 of Dads on Wrestling. I am your host, the renegade of wrestling, J.J. Williams, and joining me one more time after all the reviews that we received the last time is none other than the lady killer, Ray Larkin. But you know what it is, black and yellow, black and yellow, black and yellow. <laughs> now, I want to, right off the gate, Ray, I want to apologize for any background noise that you may pick up on this particular episode of Dads on Wrestling because that's the small price you pay when you're broadcasting live at the Honda Center for Monday Night Raw. Let's get into this week's worth of wrestling, Ray. Talk a little bit about what happened on Raw and SmackDown. Give, um, us, a little, give us a little bit of backstory, your thoughts of what went down this week in professional wrestling. Awesome, man. Well, first of all, on uh, Raw, I'm finally glad that WWE is doing storylines. It's amazing, isn't it? I know. All these freaking people, they've got writing shit on paper, and they finally made something work for them. CM Punk and Randy Orton feuding based on a storyline. I mean, this is just awesome. That's why we, uh, we're wearing our gear today, because it's so... We're just so happy that they actually put together a storyline. 2008 Unforgiven, Randy Orton and the Legacy attacking CM Punk. And now CM Punk bringing the new Nexus together and uh, getting some revenge on Randy Orton. I love it. I hope it's WrestleMania uh, 27. That's a big match I'm hoping for. Yeah, I totally agree. Last year CM Punk stole the show at WrestleMania when he fought Rey Mysterio. And this year if he goes one-on-one -on -one with Randy Orton, that's just... Another notch in his belt, another step on the ladder, if you will, for CM Punk. Awesome talent going places in the future, in my opinion. Raw was good, but the main thing that got me on SmackDown is that Edge, my favorite wrestler, the Rated R Superstar, retained his title over Dolph Ziggler, one guy who's clearly not on his level, and he proved that with Vicky Guerrero as the special guest referee. But what's going to happen with that? Because Vicky Guerrero was outside the ring and clearly saw Edge deliver the band Spear. But for all of you Backer fans, it took one man, Clay Matthews, to come in and make the one, two, three for Edge. Now I know I'm saying this with our cameraman being a big Detroit Lions fan, but the Green Bay Packers helped Edge. Oh, no, 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 don't go, don't go, come back. <laughs> but the Green Bay Packers helping Edge. Now as a big Jet fan, I'm gonna have to say this, I'm not too fond on the Packers because they beat us this year. Hey. But Clay Matthews helping Edge, big us to the Green Bay Packers. You know, it's always good when WWE can get some mainstream media attention for something. And like them or not, the Green Bay Packers Super Bowl champions are just bringing a little bit more public media attention to the WWE. I've heard all around the internet, and I know you as a stockholder confirmed this with me earlier, title belt sales have jumped through the roof because Aaron Rodgers had a World Heavyweight title on his shoulder. At the Super so, Bowl, that was awesome. You know, call it what you want. Main Street Media attention is something WWE <laughs> desperately needs right now. Desperately. And when asked on the corporate call, who's going to be the next John Cena? Well, it came from Vince McMahon's mouth, Alberto Del Rio. The Miz, because he's what, folks? Awesome! And last but surely not least, Randy Orton, the man who has a 10-year deal with WWE. But then again, he's kind of been the face of WWE since 2004, just not as prominent of a face as Cena and Batista were at the time. Before we head on to the next segment, uh, do you like Randy Orton now? Always been a fan of Randy Orton. Lady Killer going back to 2002 with his little Midwestern farmer haircut fighting oh, Hardcore Holly that. in his debut match. No, I'm, I was liking him when he was riding, limousine riding, Jeff flying, willing and dealing with the Dude, nature board. What about the RNN News Network? Oh, no. My elbow is 85% healed. <laughs> Oh crap, I hit a door. It's 83% healed. No. There's a slight relapse in my shoulder surgery. I'm going to give you RKO, man. Rated RKO, and that, that was about it. All right, Edge Head, come on. <laughs> All right, let's go on to the next thing. TNA Impact. I am loving what they are doing with this fortune face turn. Robert Roode said what I've been wanting somebody to say for years about how the new savior, the new face of TNA, the overpaid, washed up has been, and here's all these guys that have carried the weight of the company on their shoulders. 
for the past nine years, finally getting their moment in the spotlight. Which brings us to the pay-per-view. And one of those washed up, has-beens, saviors of the company, regained the TNA World title. Uh, this is a special set shout out to our old friend X. Jeff Hardy is once again the TNA champion. Well, that just shows you how well their company I heard, is doing. I heard he was snorting lines of coke as he climbed the ladder to grab the title belt. And you know Seriously. what? One thing that I uh, I can't help but notice is that CM Punk's been ranting on YouTube on CM Punk. Uh, not CM Punk. I'm sorry. Jeff Hardy has been ranting on YouTube against CM Punk talking about oh caffeine's a drug motherfucker and Hurricane Helms you know what you guys want to call CM Punk trash look at that old mom and pop's diner you guys are talking shit from and where's CM Punk's gonna be talking shit from tonight in front of a sold out number one rated show on cable Monday Night Raw and where are you gonna be talking shit from Jeff Hardy a basement I mean shut the fuck up man all this is about right now is that you were a drug addict and now CM Punk has your spot. There's two things you can do about it. Absolutely nothing and like it, asshole. You know, I used to be a huge Jeff Hardy fan. I've documented this on other episodes of the program before. I'm still a Jeff Hardy fan, even though I'll talk a little bit of crap about him. But seriously, the dude is facing jail time in a couple mm. weeks and he put the world strap around him. That doesn't make sense, Dixie. That doesn't make sense, Bischoff. What the hell are you thinking? TNA, World Heavyweight Champion, gets sentenced to 90 days in prison. Starts jail term today. Whoa, whoa, isn't their next pay-per-view locked down? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I can't even think of anywhere else to go from that one. This has been another episode of Dads on Wrestling. The Lady Killer, Ray Larkin, the Renegade of Wrestling, J.J. Williams. We'll see you next time. Black and yellow, black and yellow.